Kunis Tartu, Smisha Mo Kong Extreme, Agus Toy Shah, Mothishan de la Fela Padre Gavila Sakt, the Meg Smeen of Confishan Ayen of the Kind of Squelga Ak. I did that last year. Um, so I thought I'd do something different this year. So I've gone out and I've taken some video footage from around my town, Tremor, um, along the coastal areas, the cliffside areas, and uh, I thought I'd put it into a montage with a voiceover of telling the story of St. Patrick for St. Patrick's Day. Now this might be up a couple of days before St. Patrick's Day or on St. Patrick's Day. I'm not sure when I'll upload this yet. Uh, probably before St. Patrick's Day because I might be going away for the day itself so I won't be at home to upload the video. I guess everyone around the world knows about St. Patrick's Day. They know it's an Irish day. But um, probably not everyone knows exactly the full story of St. Patrick. So uh, I hope I get this right. So here's me telling the story of St. Patrick. One of the first things many people outside of Ireland might not know about St. Patrick is that he wasn't actually Irish himself. Where he was born, however, is a bit debatable. I've seen some stories say he was born in England, some say Scotland, some say Wales, and I'm pretty sure I've seen a few say he was born in France. Wherever he was born, however, what we do know is that around the age of 16, he was kidnapped by Irish raiders, taken to Ireland, and sold into slavery, where he was put to work as a shepherd in Antrim in Northern Ireland. After about six years of living as a slave, he had a dream one night where God spoke to him and told him to escape and that his ship was ready and waiting. He made his escape and travelled many miles south to Wexford, where he indeed did find a ship waiting. At first, the ship's captain denied him passage. One story then goes on to tell that Patrick turned to God to pray for guidance, and when he finished praying, a crewman called to him and said that they had changed their minds and he could come on board. Another story tells that the ship was transporting many animals, and after their departing, um, the animals would begin to go wild, causing the ship to return to port until they calmed down. They tried once more to leave, and the exact same thing happened. Patrick then offered to keep the animals calm if he was allowed passage to board the ship and come with them. After boarding the ship, the animals would no longer go wild. After this, he then spent many years travelling Europe, until he decided that he wanted to serve God better and decided to study to become a priest. After succeeding in this, Patrick was still unsure of what his purpose was, until one night he had another dream. This time, he heard the voices of the Irish people calling on him to return. He knew then that his mission would be to return to Ireland and teach the people Christianity. On returning to Ireland, Patrick first wished to gain the support of the High King of Tara, King Lyra, one of the most powerful men in Ireland. At this time it was the start of spring, and the King had intended to celebrate this by lighting a massive fire, and ordered that no other fire in the land was to be lit before his. In order to gain the King's attention, Patrick proceeded to build a massive fire of his own on a hilltop where the King could see, and proceeded to light this before the King's fire was lit. The king was angered and quickly gathered up his troops and rode out to meet the man who would dare challenge him. But after meeting with Patrick, he was very impressed by his composure and confidence and invited him to a meeting at his royal court at Tara the following day. It was at this meeting where it is said Patrick used a shamrock to explain the concept of the Holy Trinity, that the Father, Son and Holy Spirit were one and the same, showing how a shamrock had one stem and three leaves. Patrick was probably also helped by the fact that the shamrock, as well as the number three, were also considered sacred symbols to the ancient Irish people. Even though King Lyra had actually refused to convert to Christianity, he was so impressed by Patrick that he granted him the freedom to travel across Ireland so that he could teach his religion to anyone who wished to listen. Slowly enough, Patrick would go on to convert Ireland from a pagan country into a Christian one. The legends of St. Patrick also say that he's responsible for ridding Ireland of all snakes. One story tells of how he stood on a cliff top and all the snakes in the land entered the sea and drowned. Another story says that one snake stayed and Patrick tried to catch it in a box, but the snake eluded him. Finally, Patrick was able to trick the snake by saying that it would not even fit inside the box. The snake, wanting to prove Patrick wrong, entered the box and then Patrick quickly closed it and flung it into the sea. Although many people today question if there ever was any snakes in Ireland to begin with, and 
see this legend merely as a symbolism for how Patrick converted the pagan Irish people to Christianity, since snakes were also high symbols of paganism.